Hi everybody, thanks again for joining me today. If you're new here, my name is Joni Young and I'm going to be demonstrating how I painted um, the first one here on the left, this nighttime cityscape walking in the rain. I'll be adding the second one in a few days for you guys. We're working on a small 4x4 or 3x3 mini canvas here. You can do this on any size canvas that you want though. I've got a small flat brush here, it's a half inch. A few colors off to the left on the side here, some light blue violet, some gold. I'll be using some um, black and some white. I'm going to list all the colors below in the description for you. So I'm going to go across up and down with that light blue violet, then pull in some of my black and my gold and start just blocking in some lines and rectangles here. And those are going to be the buildings. So we're going to pull a line diagonally down below on either side to create perspective where the street's going to be. And then some lines that are going to be diagonal straight up and down. I'm going to use the corner of my brush just to add little dabs and dots for the windows. So, so easy guys. Anybody can do this. If you've ever been intimidated like I have been in the past with cityscapes and structures and buildings, this is the easiest way to do it. Approach. It's all how you look at something and approach it. You really just have to break it down into shapes and light and shadow. When you look at a painting like that or a composition, you can paint anything, you guys. I promise you this. So just keep watching this and you're going to learn so many tips and techniques and tricks. We're going to follow below with a shadow, just pulling and flicking down towards the bottom of the canvas. And then just a couple of lines on either side, the left and the right, for diagonally like that will create that perspective that kind of draws you in it makes it look like we're in the foreground and as those lines get closer together prop kind of about halfway down the canvas um, they're smaller and closer together so that makes it look like it's farther away and narrowing there it also helps to draw our eyes into the center of this painting creating that focal point and center of interest I'm gonna just keep adding little bits of color and shadow light blue violet is one of my favorite colors you guys have been noticing if you've been following my channel and my videos lately that I use it in almost every painting I do I just love it so much I can't say enough about it it looks great with any color I haven't found a color it doesn't go with um, and black I normally don't use a lot of black but in this cityscape I'm going to so expect the unexpected with me <laughs> I'm always doing something new and trying something different I just really want to broaden my horizons and get out of my comfort zone so I can grow as an artist and I don't want anything to hold me back. I want to paint whatever it is that I've been wanting to paint or thinking about painting for the past, I don't know, 20 years probably. And I'm just going to be tackling all those things that I've wanted to paint and I've been putting off. And I'm sharing my experience with you guys and hoping that I can help you guys paint all the things that you've been scared to paint. I want to break it down into easy steps. I try to make things as easy and as simple to follow as possible. If you guys have any questions uh, and want to connect with me one-on-one, -on -one, please join my Patreon. I'll have a link below for that where you can help support me so I can keep doing what I love to do, and which is painting. But most importantly, it's teaching you guys I've been teaching painting for many many years in a classroom setting but now I've launched my YouTube channel so I want to connect and I'm able to connect with you guys all over the world it's really really cool so here I'm adding back to this painting sorry guys I'm adding some more gold and this is going to be my light in this painting and it's really going to shimmer when the light hits this painting when you look at it from different angles it really comes to life it takes on a life of its own just with a bit of that shimmer um, so I kind of like to incorporate these metallic paints, rose gold, silver, pearl iridescence are really nice accents for uh, highlights in a painting. So I kind of recommend and I'll add the links or add the brands that I'm using. Um, I'm not sponsored by any companies or affiliate through Amazon, so I'm not going to um, be adding a lot of links in my tutorials and in the description below, but I will definitely let you guys know what brand and colors I'm using. So I'm just using this flat brush still, and when I want to get in a narrow space or create a little skinny line, I just turn my brush the other way, straight up and down, and I can make it act as a liner brush. I can use the very corner of the brush to add little dots and dabs 
and I'm going to bring in some neon neon red now so sorry for uh for this uh filming the angle that I've got the camera on is just missing my neon red off to the left but it's there um and my neon paints I know you guys are asking all the time what brand I love it's Holbein Holbein luminous heavy bodied acrylics are wonderful their viscosity is great um they don't fade they have uh, a long, long life of neon. I've had neon paintings that I've I've used with or uh, used Holbein for uh, about eight years. They're eight years, eight or nine years old now, and they still uh, glow with that beautiful neon. So they're a great brand. I would love to be sponsored by them. <laughs> um, but no, I just like to share with you guys things that work for me. Um, supplies, materials, paints, brushes, anything that I find really helpful, I want to share with you guys. So just look down in the description below this video and I'll have it listed there. So I'm adding some figures in. They're just lines, a little bit thicker. It's kind of like when you're painting a figure in silhouette, think of a long, skinny triangle shape, like really, really skinny. So it's going to be the triangle starts uh, it's going to be upside down so where the shoulders are it's going to be a triangle wider at the top there and then you're just going to add a little blob just a little blob for the head on the top and then uh, a little a, like half circle uh, for the umbrella with a flat end on the bottom so you can do this so easily it's just the impression you're just creating an impression um, now you're going to see here, uh, and looking back at this, doing this voiceover, I think this figure looked fine, um, and I kept fiddling it, fiddling with it, and I wasn't happy with it, and I end up just, and I just end up taking it right off and starting from the beginning, but I wish that I had kind of just left it because I think it looks uh, fine how it is. So even I can overthink things and... Um, you know, just get intimidated sometimes and, and not like what I'm painting. I'm just like you guys. Uh, but most of the time I trust in myself and I just paint whatever I'm feeling at the time and go with it. But this, this gave me a little bit of a headache, this part right here. So, uh, I'm, I'm sped it up a little bit because it took a really long time. And you'll see here in a few minutes that I end up just taking it right off and, and you can do that too. So I don't want to leave that out of the video. I want you guys to see how you can fix your mistakes, how you can take the paint off and start over. Um, and it can be a little bit scary when you're using black paint, but you're going to see right here that you can do it. Of course, it helps if the paint is still a little bit wet. Once it's set into the canvas, um, it's going to be harder to get that off. Uh, though you could if you gently scrubbed with something that's not too abrasive but definitely if you catch it right away so here I just kind of wiped it off and created like a, a gray uh, background and then I'm going to come over and do a few lines here to to make those buildings back there stand out a little bit more and then I'm going to come over and do another figure so lines pulling off the paint for some highlights I went over that gold that's okay it's all part of the process and learning don't worry about it always always keep in mind that when you're making mistakes you're learning you can't learn if you never uh, make mistakes we always have to learn from what we're doing wrong and by our mistakes so don't get frustrated you guys just go with it. Enjoy the process. If you make a mistake, that's okay. Like I said, you're always learning. And that's how you're going to grow as artists. And you'll learn next time that's not what I want to do. And I'm going to do it differently. And so here I just made it a little bit smaller. I, I like it this way, but I liked it the other way too. I think in the future I'm going to do one with a a uh, figure and silhouette that's a little bit larger that'll stand out a little bit more and and make more of an impression and I'm gonna just go ahead and keep adding more and more so this one I had one uh, reference photo I was going by 
Um, but <laughs> I really couldn't follow it. I end up doing my own thing all the time. It's really getting harder and harder for me. The more comfortable I get with myself as an artist and trust my um, intuition as I'm painting, um, the less I'm able to work from a photo, um, which is going to be really interesting because I have a couple of projects coming up for uh, some clients of mine and I'm going to share those videos with you guys. I haven't done them yet, but I, I'm going to be doing them this week. I've got uh, two reference photos that I'm going to be working from and I'm going to try to paint exactly from the photos and I'm just going to be exaggerating the colors. Um, so yeah, make sure if you subscribe to my channel, which I hope you do, tap that bell so you get notified every time I post a new video. I'm adding little dots and dabs of that blue violet and neon red. Now with your shadows on your figures here, like the silhouette in the foreground, uh, it it's really nice when you, it makes an impression you're painting when you exaggerate those lines. So I'm making them longer and it creates more of a mood and a feeling in a painting. And that's what art is all about, exaggerating, expression. Otherwise, what's the point? You can just take a photograph, right? But what us artists do is we express ourselves through how we feel when we see things in real life. You can really learn a lot about a person just by looking at their artwork, the colors they use, the brush strokes, the shadows and highlights they choose to use in their paintings. So I'm making a little bit of a green color here now. I've got uh, my warm yellow green and I think it's Grumbacher or Windsor and Newton but it's just a, a yellowy green color so you can take a chartreuse green would work or any green add yellow to it or you could just use yellow and mix it with that blue violet um, I'm also taking the green and mixing it with a little bit of black and just creating some different tones in this painting that I think might be interesting. I know the green, the light green is complementary with a neon red. And then I can mix uh, my gold with my neon red and get uh, really kind of a warm peachy color that's going to be complementary with the uh, light blue violet. So I do have my liner brush here now. I could have kept using um, my little flat brush but I decided to go for my liner brush here to create more little lines and dots. add a few more little shadows down here and then I'm going to call this painting all done. So I hope you guys learned a lot and that I was able to motivate and inspire you somehow today. Please leave a comment below, like this video and subscribe for more. Bye!